too. Indeed, it is not the money we are spending on all these rescues that upsets Michigan Republican Congressman Peter Hoekstra. It's not knowing where the heck we're spending it. So secret that the congressman is so not going to take it anymore. So, congressman, it continues happening. What to do? Well, I think what Congress really needs to do, Neil, is we've got to push for transparency. You know, we've got to recognize that as we have moved through this process, we've moved it out of the courts. We've now moved it into the political arena. Plant closings, dealer closings, uh, the sale of Hummer. You know, all of these types of issues now are being dealt with in the political arena. And we need to make sure that we've got total transparency as to how these decisions are being made so that, you know, we don't start seeing political political mischief uh, or what some would call crony capitalism going on. I mean, this is affecting lots of people's lives. We need to make sure that these are being made in the best interest of GM and not in the best interest of a political party or a political ideology here in Washington. I just wonder, the politics notwithstanding, whether had Americans known up front that bankruptcy would be considered for GM when we were giving the money last fall, that was a, a word they never mentioned, that it was verboten, and now it is, and that one of the key things they would sell off from GM would fall into a, a Chinese investor's hands, which might be all well and good, but something that I think if we had broached back then they might have felt differently about. Would they have forked over so much as a dollar. No, I don't think uh, the American people would have gone for it. I think they would have been reluctant to do two things. Number one is to invest the dollars into GM and to Chrysler. I think the second thing that they would have been very reluctant about is moving bankruptcy out of the courts where there are rules that are established as to exactly how you know the process would take place to where we are today where it's really uncharted waters where the federal government is now directing GM really directing a lot of what's going to happen in bankruptcy and putting it into the political arena you know one of the things uh, you know I think we're getting very concerned about here Neil is that is GM going to become the new Amtrak you know, right. I think we all, in, in Michigan, we've got hopes and visions that we're going to see a revitalized and reinvigorated GM. But is that really going to happen when it's being run by the government? We've seen what they've done to Amtrak. Well, we should point uh, out, too, it, Congressman, you're a great student of political history, but back in 1970, when then a Republican President, Richard Nixon, had uh, talked about shoring up what would eventually be uh, this national railroad system called Amtrak, it would be for three years. And I think that's almost 40 years ago. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And, you know, we can't let GM go down that path, and we can't allow another major industry to fall down and follow the path uh, of what happened with Amtrak. Uh, you know, Amtrak continues to be a, a black hole into which the American taxpayer continues pouring money for inefficient service, uh, poor management, and all of these types of well, things. You know, I'm sure I know GM Congress likes Amtrak. I know the Vice President likes Amtrak. I I'm not here to judge Amtrak Congress, and I am here to, to, to judge the government in general as a way of even uh, once it comes, it's sort of like me at a party. I don't leave. I start breaking into the people's refrigerator and ordering pay-per-view. I refuse to leave. And I think the government's like me. And now I think that the government, uh, even Fritz Henderson was telling me yesterday from GM, he thinks it could take years for the government to at the very least unwind its position in GM, uh, to say none, nothing about its influence. What, what do you make of that, years to unwind that 60-plus percent position? Well, I think uh, it's very, very clear, Neil, that if it's going to take years, it probably will never happen. I think you're going to find people in Washington, D.C. that are going to find it uh, very entertaining, and it's one thing that they really would like to do is to manage the automobile industry. We do it, we've been doing it legislatively for years. We've killed the American auto industry with cafe standards and all other kinds of rules and regulations uh, over the last 40 years, and now what we're going to do, we're now going to be running it, uh, and I don't think the federal government can effectively run uh, an automobile company. The interesting thing here, Neil, would be since the American taxpayer now owns it, 
rather than having these shares being held uh, in by Washington DC by the federal government is it time to distribute those shares to the American taxpayers uh, and now, create a, a market again a concept. yeah give, right. give it back to the American taxpayers give us all 10 15 20 shares of GM stock and allow us to make the decision and to set a market value for that and when we want to sell it and who would want to buy it. Congressman, uh, that makes too much sense, so that's not going to happen. Uh, thank you very, very much. Good having you. Always good to talk to you. Thanks, Neil. All right, so we know that a Chinese industrial machinery company expected to buy GM.